Coal River Mountain is the last partially intact mountain in the Coal River watershed. You know, they have already tore apart almost every other mountain in this watershed to drag out the coal. I grew up, you know, on that mountain pretty much, you know, gathering wild edibles and roots and, you know, going hunting. I mean, these mountains are so biodiverse. There's mixed mesophytic forests have just a wealth of biodiversity of herbs like up in the forests up there this spring I saw so many spring ephemerals there are there are ramps there's bloodroot there's black and blue cohosh um, like every kind of medicinal herb spring ephemeral you can think of these are the richest like biodiversity wise these are the richest temperate freshwater ecosystems in the world and these mountains have been around for 500 million years. I mean, it, mountaintop removal is irreversible. There's no way, of course, that they can put the topography back in place, but it goes far, far beyond that. The topsoil that takes hundreds of years to build, is it, reclamation isn't going to fix that. They're not going to be able to put back a stream. When they create these, these drainages with rocks in them, there's none of the components of the original hydrology, chemistry, biology that are in a living, intact stream. I came here last summer, um, and the first, I think the second day I was here, I, I was at a community, a community member's house, and he, within the first few minutes, brought out this yearbook um, from high school um, and was showing us all of the people who had had cancer um, and are either still living with cancer or who had died from cancer. And the number, just like the sheer number of people was just appalling. Um, and the, the folks that he said that weren't sick, that didn't have cancer, that, that weren't dying, that hadn't died, were folks who, who didn't drink the water, who specifically did not drink the water. You know, coming here and starting to pull data from Freedom of Information Act requests, Looking at DMRs, which are direct monitoring reports, which are documents that the coal companies themselves put together, even in their record keeping, you're seeing levels of selenium, manganese, other toxins in public drinking water supplies that in other parts of the country and in other parts of the developed world, nobody would stand for. And because it's happening here and it's happening to poor communities and rural communities, and because it's happening in a way that allows certain people to profit incredibly, because of those three things, it can happen here, and it's invisible. There's no question about what it is. It's not. This isn't happening in other places, and this is this is the reason that people are dying in such large numbers is because people are being poisoned, and there's no other. There are no other explanations for it. came here as a grad student to do research for a master's thesis. Somebody in my position writing reports and doing research uh, in an environment where the regulatory agencies are as captured and corrupt as they are down here. Doing that research and writing those reports also needs to be coupled with a strong, public, loud, unified, rowdy direct action campaign because Good science alone in the hands of corrupt or inept people doesn't do anything. Um, so I'm going to be providing direct support to two good friends of mine who are going up into trees. When folks are up in the trees, then uh, the, the company is not allowed to let off a blast within 300 feet of that, the, the protected structure. Mm. This direct action is a tree set that I will be up in alongside um, someone else. Um, and it'll be near a high wall miner, um, and it will be ending, um, it will be uh, stopping work from happening. Um, and I'm realizing, I think more and more, that it is a dangerous thing to take, but um, 
what the coal industry is doing here is infinitely more dangerous. Um, and I think the risks that we're taking um, need to be taken um, to end what is being done here. It's definitely dangerous. And honestly, it is a little bit scary to me when I'm, I'm up there and I realize that there are, there are a couple small ropes and carabiners keeping me from falling 80 feet. I don't take that lightly. It's worth it to to take this risk is because I recognize that there is so much at stake. I know that people's lives are at stake and I know that the peculiar beauty of this region and its biodiversity and the many species that live here are at stake also. This is a sacrifice zone. Appalachia is a sacrifice zone and it can't be a sacrifice zone anymore. We need people to fight alongside us and the coal industry isn't going to stop until people demand them to stop. And we're demanding that to happen now, um, but we need more people to demand along alongside with us. Don't let the system keep you way down there. You gotta know it in your heart that you are way up here too.